you have a permanent spinal injury which can give you chronic pain and you've tried everything to improve your situation but nothing seems to work? Then come along with us and we'll show you a path that could improve the quality of your life. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back. And if this is your first time to our channel, it's great having you join us. And so today I'm with my friend, Joseph Nakul, who's a physiotherapist. Thanks for having me, Musa. Uh, it's great, thanks for coming. Um, in actual fact, I made a video back two years ago uh, about my spinal injury, uh, which was a compression of my spine and had to have a laminectomy and which caused a residue of nerve damage, which is called corda equina syndrome. So I'm actually damaged from the waist down, um, which corda equina affects both the bowel, the bladder, the genitals, and also the legs. And corda equina basically just means horse's tail, which is a bundle of nerves that come out through the foramen around the lumbar area. And it has uh, responsibility of all the lower parts of your body. But on the day I really that video which is the 24th of September I was actually on the couch with another flare-up and as it turns out it was another stenosis another compression of my spine which is basically the scar tissue of the bone from the first operation and so eventually I was going to need another decompression but thank god they didn't have to do another laminectomy now I did something really silly after that and so I assumed that hydrotherapy was going to be the only thing that was going to be able to help me but in actual fact, as it turned out, my right leg became weaker than my left and my left leg was the problem. And so now I've got two really weak legs. So I went to Joseph to his practice and uh, he did some testing on me and uh, he showed me that my leg was actually weaker. My, the back of my leg was weaker than my front. And through some exercises that he's given me over the last couple of months, he's actually been able to strengthen it back up for me. So I've now discovered that hydrotherapy is not the only thing that's gonna help me, but in actual fact, I need to do some land-based exercises. So it's important to go to physiotherapy so they can help you to gain back some of what you had before to improve your lifestyle. So Joseph, I've gotta ask you, what did you find from when I first came to you to now, what do you find is, the, is, is, is first of all, the issues that I have to overcome and also the improvements? So there's a couple of things that we like to focus on. And because, um, because you've had the painful years, you're, sometimes you fall along the spectrum of chronic pain. Yep. So your brain automatically associates certain movements and fear memory tends to yep. play up on us. So uh, you could probably think of something that you have, you're, you have a phobia of. Yep. And as soon as you see that thing, your body automatically goes into fight-flight mode. And it's the same with movement. So as soon as you start to do something that maybe you used to do, and your brain has associated that with pain in the past, then automatically you go into that flight. Yeah, and I've experienced that, right? I spoke to about that on the first video. Um, I call it the phantom pain. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, all physios acknowledge that that pain is equal to real actual pain, yes. right? And uh, so for me, I know I go back into pre-operation pain if I don't exercise. Yes. So the most important thing I found is the core muscle is the key. But one thing I didn't focus on is the pelvic floor. And so you've been able to help me with that as well. And so those exercises you gave me, they were brilliant. Um, and so we're gonna keep continuing and progressing. So what caused this flare up was when I actually made my concrete video. And when I release videos, they're not at the same time as when I make them. They could be months and months prior. But when I made the concrete video, how do I show form working and concreting, uh, that's actually what caused the flare up because the stenosis was there, the growth was there, but it was flared up because I was bending a lot. So you're gonna show me as time progresses how I can move better and also bend better. But what I'd like to do today is go into the pool and you improve some of my hydrotherapy exercises because I found water resistant exercises were actually for me, uh, the strongest to build my legs because um, I was getting atrophy in my muscles and if I let it go too long, as I said, I'll go to pre-operation pain. Yep. And so now I need to you know, focus on that so then I can continue making these videos without experiencing the severe pain that I am getting through my legs. Yeah, so a hydrotherapy, we can't take away from that. So you've experienced chronic pain and hydrotherapy is one of the only measures that you took to increase your heart rate, to yep. maintain your function. Yep. that's correct. So it's very important and it has its part. Yep. But it's just not going to prepare you or maintain or improve your ability to go to the shops, pick up groceries. Yep. And that's what my goal is, is to help you maintain and improve that. So 
over time we'll work together small steps and hopefully we can reach long-term goals. So there's one thing really interesting that uh, my specialists, they all my specialists told me during this time of recovery over that two year period, the initial operation, um, they said that I'm not allowed to lift anything over 20 kilos and from a standing position only, not from bending. Now after speaking to you, and I haven't done much at this point, but you've encouraged me to start bending and lifting. Now, can I ask you why you're saying that and why the specialists say not to? Yeah, so the way the specialists think is structure and the way physios think is function. So there is no evidence to say that bending is going to hurt you. Yep. In fact, there's more evidence to say- But is there evidence to say it's gonna damage me? No, there's evidence to say it's gonna improve your spine health. Okay, beautiful. And that's where we wanna to move to. So if you're going to pick up something off the ground, that's a piece of paper. Yep. If you're not practicing that in a closed environment, yep. when it's un, when it's expected, then in an unexpected environment, when it's not when it's out of the blue, that's when you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. So we'll have to actually take you into a closed environment, practice the lifting, so that if it's needed on a day to day basis with your everyday activity, you're yep. going to be able to cope with it. Beautiful. So. I am really excited about this because for six and a half years, I've been very limited what I can lift and I've been putting a lot of burden on my family. I've got to be honest, I was actually really pessimistic after the second operation thinking that, wow, this is going to continue to deteriorate in my lifetime. And by the time I get to 65, I'm currently just over my mid 50s, so I'm 56. Uh, by my mid 60s, I, I thought I was going to be in a lot of trouble. You've actually given me a lot of hope that I can actually at least maintain it into well past my 60s and probably in my 70s where I may have some real difficulties cause of this uh, chronic back pain. Yeah, and look, if we can change that mindset, then that's gonna go a long way in helping yeah. maintain and maintain a quality of life at the end of the day. And I do stress we are gonna take small steps. And yeah. it's, it's a long, long term thing. Great. You, you, you've really definitely changed things for me, so I really do appreciate it. And I'm hoping for more changes in the hydro pool. All right, Mister, I've got patience to see, let's jump in. Alright, so show me your usual program and I'll buddy in if I need to. Beautiful. Okay, so first I just do uh, walking across the pool to warm up. So I just go front and back and then sideways. So I find like this is really hard for me to push through the water. So the water resistance is, uh, is what I find that works the most. And because the water takes the weight off my back, I don't feel the pain as I would normally when I'm walking. I can still feel the numbness in my legs, yep. but I find that this really is helpful. So, so what do we try to change something? This? Yeah, for sure. So when you're walking forward, with every step, I want you to rotate towards the step. Try and get some mobility um, through walking. So with every time, every time you walk, the body um, rotates to counter the forces of movement. Okay. And if you can work on that in the water with less load on the spine. Okay. Uh, left. And then right, rotate. Right. To that's that's actually, cool. that's cool. That's it. Perfect. Okay, that's easy. Yeah. That's, just, through, that's restoring normal walking patterns. So with every step you take, you rotate. I find it hard to do it backwards. Oh, going backwards, I think, is a little bit more difficult. It's not something we normally do, so it's okay. That's it. Perfect. Now you're in the loop. Yeah. I right, say so the left turn is when the left foot is engaged. It's forward, yes. Okay. I won't do it backwards you know, because I'm quite hard here. Yeah. I'm actually quite hard. Perfect. So the left to the left foot. Perfect. Perfect. How does that feel to you? That looks, that's really good actually. Yeah. Okay, so Joseph, the next thing I do is actually use these paddles. Um, I've got to tell you, out of all the exercises I do, this is my lifesaver. Uh, the reason being because uh, I find that uh, it gives me the upper strength that I need. Uh, I do get puffed out when I'm doing it, but uh, that, that's also a benefit, it works my heart. But um, I, I just find I still have a lot of upper strength. So I do have to actually pull myself up a lot when I'm in a, in a uh, position of kneeling, or if I'm on the floor or whatever, or even getting out of bed, I use my arms a lot. Yep. So, um, yeah. yeah, perfect. And what you'll find is you're using your upper body. Yeah. So that, that actually fatigues your breathing muscles. Okay. And it makes you breathe fast, like, and it'll get your heart rate. Really Beautiful. Good. Okay. So I'll show you the first one I do. Basically, I just go down a little bit, only because the water is it's not a very deep pool. Um, and uh, so I engage my core. And I, with my arms, I hold everything stiff and just pull tight to the water. Okay. And the harder I do it, the more benefit I get. Yep. That's great. All right, so the next one I do is basically, um, again, water resistance. Uh, I start with my right hand, you can start with either, and I just go down, engaging the core, and just alternatively just pull down on the water. Now, it does push me back. 
Yep. Right, so I've got to balance myself. Yep. I find it really difficult, but I'm getting to the point where uh, you know that balancing actually strengthening my legs as well, not just my core, and it just gives me so much upper strength. Now, usually I go a lot harder than this. The water goes out of the pool when I do it because I have built a lot of strength in my muscles and my arms. So the next thing I do um, is go sideways, both hands, and so again I go down, engage my core and just go to the side. You can feel that water rushing to you. And the harder you do it, the more rush you get. So I do 20 of these each, and I do reps of three. So I don't go light on these, I go very heavy. Now because I'm in the water, it has no bearing on my back at all. Okay, so this wasn't a cheap item to buy, but again, I used to use this uh, at the hydro pool with the physios. So this uh, basically has holes on top, holes on the bottom. And so what you do is just uh, put it in the water, submerse it, and so the bubbles will come through, just get all, all the air out. Now it still wants to come to the top, so you've got to throw it down. And so you've got to quickly with your foot put it on top because it wants to float back up. So I'll just try my best here because I sometimes miss it. Okay, so I'll push down, there it is, okay, and there it is, I've got it. All right, so now what I've got to do is balance on it. And this really helps me to learn to balance. Okay, so once I get my balance, if you can count to 30, uh, and I try to stay on for 30 seconds. Perfect. Okay. Okay. No. My legs are feeling weak today. Uh, and it's on and off. It depends on what I've done the day before and what I've done for the day. So I'll do that again. Good job, Lisa. Uh, 30 seconds. I'm going to keep going. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's it. I guess the next thing I'd use is this float board. Um, and I won't be using it for swimming, but basically I put it in the water, which becomes a lot of pressure. And it, I engage my core, and then I turn my hands, and I twist. Now my twisting is, as I said before, is pretty bad. As you said, when you're in the practice, um, when people turn, they're actually not turning their spine. So, if you can tell me how I can do this one better. Yeah, so just try to keep your hips facing forward. Yeah, and which I'm not doing possibly. Okay. If you can um, do that, I find that hard. You probably won't go as far, but that's fine. Stay within your, your, your Am I keeping it straight? That's better. Okay. Perfect. I actually find that hard. I'm trying this. But does this help for bending? Over time. Okay. But it's not, it's not the key thing that's going to help you bend. This is a more mobility exercise. Okay. Meditation. So... Yeah, I can't... You know, you reach down sideways. You might be thinking about things like looking over your shoulder in the car, or you've got a bit of a rotation. Oh, I find that really hard, yeah. Stuff like that. that that's what this will offer. Oh, great. Because I actually find it hard to look at my blind side. Yeah. Um, so I've got to try it when I'm driving, which is not very much these days. Um, yeah, and uh, I've got to twist my whole body to make sure I can see the blind side. The next thing, I basically just uh, do steps on ladders, and this thing I, I used to hate doing, uh, but I find it's actually beneficial. So basically I just go on the ladder, and just go back down the same foot that was last, it goes first, and go back down. Lift the left leg up, go back down. It's just a continuation. I do this 20 times per leg. So I lift the right leg up. And make sure your uh, paws activated. Yeah. And on the way up, be conscious of squeezing your bottom and your hair string at the back. Which I don't do. Which you don't normally use. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so this, this squeeze it just like the pelvic door muscle. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So think about drawing your knee and bending your knee as you stand as well. So bend your knee, bend your knee, bend your knee. You should feel a little bit more activation out of the back and less in the quad. Perfect. We master it here, then we master it on the leg. Beautiful. One step at a time. Perfect. Cool. Jack, I'm tired. Okay, so the last thing I do is use the tire. So basically I'm just paddling with my feet, just like uh, dog paddling as you would normally with your legs. Uh, obviously not just not using my hands. And so I run out of runway, so I've got to turn around. And I'll do that for as long as I can, and sometimes it's only two minutes. Yep. Sometimes I can go a little longer, depending on the activities for the day. But I find this is really good because it's actually not straining me. What it's doing is actually relaxing my legs. I don't know if I can explain that. Yep. It's like, I used to love bike riding. I used to love 
uh, you know, long distance running. And it actually brings that memory back. Okay, so when I'm finished doing that, I then just relax my legs and just let them float in the water. And as I said in the last video, it is so relaxing because my legs are burning all the time, 24 seven, when I'm sleeping and all the rest. And, and these days I just try to take a little lyric up to help me sleep, uh, to take some of that pain away. Uh, and one thing I didn't mention, if the pain becomes extreme, I do use Tarjan, which is an opioid, and uh, it really is not a good thing. It does make it hallucinative and it's not good. And so just floating like this, just, it is just incredible. Uh, it feels, it, it sort of brings back the pre-damage. You know, you almost feel normal. Yeah. And it just feels really good. Yeah. Okay, Joseph, that's it. I'm finished. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think one of the biggest takeaways that I, I just would like to stress is that this is like learning a new task for you. So yeah. you want to do it every day um, and frequently. It's kind of like a kid learning to walk. Yeah. They try and try and try. Until they change their mode of control, they're able to yeah. and then they It's a real mind mind mindset to change mode of control. It really is. Yeah. I have to say, Moose, I'm really impressed with your setup and your array of exercises. Excellent. Oh, uh, great. Look, thanks very much for all the hints you give me. Um, I just felt I wasn't doing them 100%. So I used to go to an European hospital uh, 12 times a year in the hydro pool, and I did it for about four years. And they instructed me and, you know, sort of fine tuned what I was doing. But now my injury is, is altered, as we said. And so I needed to, uh, to change those exercises to fit uh, the new injury. Yeah, so to recap, like the exercises are great. Just thinking about your control of your trunk while you're doing them at the same yep. time. Yep. And also meeting physical activity guidelines, just general guidelines, you know, 150 to 300 minutes of physical activity a week. Yep. Trying to get your heart rate up at a moderate intensity. Yep. Somewhere where, an intensity where you can talk, but you can't sing. So that's perfect. But I do have to add for all your listeners, uh, exercises are always individualized and you have to see a pr exercise professional to be prescribed exercise. And everything we've gone through today is specific to Moose's um, condition. Thanks for that, Joseph. And Joseph, I do need to mention about this pool. So this is a FitMax iPool 3, and a lot of people ask me questions about it, uh, where I got it from, and a few other questions. So I did get it from eBay. Uh, I did get it at half price. I was very lucky, actually. Uh, and so the heat pump that I run is a summer wave heat pump, and it's a 12 and a half kilowatt system. Now, that runs a lot of electricity. In actual fact, it is equal to around about five kilowatts per hour. And so you do need to warm this up. It takes, in wintertime, about 24 hours to heat up, and in summertime, probably around about six to eight hours depending on the temperature outside and so it is well worth it but you need to understand that it will cost you a bit of money to run it so I did get some solar panels for my roof in actual fact 16 kilowatts and I do have backup batteries just to keep my cost down and so there's two uh, outlets that come through or inlets and they run through the filtering system they then go through the heat pump and then come back into the pool through the outlet through one pipe so you do need to go to your plumbing supply to find the right size the right fittings um, and also I did put a shutoff valve uh, because there are times when you won't want to use the heat pump when you the, turn the heat pump off. And so I've put three shutoff valves in it. So then that way I could put chlorine in the pool and uh, let the filter do its job cleaning the pool. And one thing also, because the heat pump needs to blow out, um, the, uh, I did actually have to get some foam. There's a, a form working foam, which is a 1200 by 1200 millimeter. And I've placed them under the roller door and I've cut out around the air conditioner or the heat pump and it just comes down and locks it off. And that way it's also safety for children. And talking about insulation, you do need to put your plastic over the pool. That will also insulate the pool as well. And so uh, one last thing, uh, there have been a lot of children die from above ground pools. So it's re really important that you consult your council and uh, make sure that you know what you're doing. And so there is this safety device here for the ladder and you can lock that off so the kids can't climb it. So Joseph, thank you very much for coming all the way to my house and showing me how to do these exercises. I really, really appreciate it and it will change my life. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so if you are interested and you live in the Sydney region, I will put a link below in the descriptions for a couple of locations where Joseph works from. Yeah, just in Caddens and Gold. So if you like, I'll also put a link for this pool and for the heat pump and for all the equipment I've used today. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any comments at all, please leave them below and I will get back to you. And I'd ask you, please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share this video, and there's many more to come. Thanks guys. See you guys.